Good evening, Shiloh. Giving honor to God, my Lord and my Savior. Giving honor to my pastor, the Reverend B. Lewis Colleton, the angel of this house. Giving honor to my mentor, Reverend Dr. Albert Curry. Giving love to my wife, Danelle Wilson giving honor also to the ministers and the officers assembled, and especially giving honor to the congregation here at Shiloh Baptist Church and all the listeners on the internet, I bid you good evening in the name of Jesus. Those that are able to stand, please stand for prayer and for scripture. As you come to your feet, please find Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31, as you come to your feet for prayer. Please place your finger there as we go to the throne of grace. Heavenly Father, we thank you this evening for allowing us to gather together to hear your word. We thank you for blessing us and loving us all the day long. You woke us up this morning. You started us on our way. You gave us a reasonable portion of health and strength. We thank you. We bless you. We magnify you. We glorify your name. Now, Lord God, as we go into the word, we really need your presence now. Take Greg out of self and replace Greg with the Holy Spirit so that you can speak to your congregation, to your children, to your church. We ask this blessing and all other blessings in the precious name of Jesus. Amen, amen, and amen. All right, church, Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31 I will be reading from the New King James Version, Isaiah 40 and 31. You're familiar with this passage, the New King James Version. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. You may be seated in the presence of God. The title of my sermon is Worth the Wait. Worth the Wait. Point number one is work while you wait. Work while you wait. Point number two is, he waited on you and me. He waited on you and me. Point number three, he's worth the wait. Point number three, he's worth the wait. The book of Isaiah was written in and around 740 B.C., And in chapter 40, we find the nation of Judah experiencing God's punishment and wondering if God had abandoned them. Remember, church, that by this time, it was established in the Hebrew mindset that the Jewish people were God's chosen people. Judah did not like punishment. They were beginning to question not only God's greatness, but God's willingness to share that greatness with them, the chosen people. Verse 27 says this, Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel? My way is hidden from the Lord, and my just claim is passed over by my God. So, beloved saints, God wants you to know tonight that your just claim is not being passed over by him. All of us need to work while we wait. 
let us take advantage of this waiting on the Lord opportunity to pray and to grow and to labor for the Lord while God works on our just claim. What work could we do? We could call or text everybody that's on the sick and the shut-in list that Reverend Stancil sends out. Imagine every person that's in bereavement, every person on the sick and the shut-in list would receive a phone call or a text from two to 300 plus Shiloh Baptist Church members. How much love would that show? How much good work would that be while we were waiting on the Lord to deal with our just claims? Shiloh and friends, now I'm an honorary member of the tribe of Judah. Sometimes I have felt in the past like my just claim wasn't going to be fulfilled. But the Lord has spoken to me about the need to work while I wait on him, to work on my praying, work on my praising him, work on loving others while I wait on the Lord, especially loving my enemies. So saints, let us all purpose to work while we wait on the Lord to renew our strength, to work while we wait on the Lord to mount us up with wings like eagles, to work as we run and not become weary, to work as we walk and not become faint, to work on loving our pastor, the Reverend B. Lewis Colleton, to work on improving our love and our respect for each other here at Shiloh, to work on improving our Bible study and our Sunday school attendance, to work on improving our praise and our prayer life, and believing by faith that while we work on all these things, that the Lord will answer us, he shall answer us, and he will fulfill our claims, our just claims in due time. Point number two, he waited on you and me. Oh, yes, he did. He waited on you and me. Oftentimes when another saint is sharing whatever it is they're going through, we say, wait on the Lord, brother. Wait on the Lord, sister. While this is good encouragement, what is sometimes missed is the point <clears throat> and the fact that Jesus had to wait on us. Jesus had to wait on us to stop cursing. Jesus had to wait on us to come out of that house at that address. Jesus had to wait on us to put that thing down out of our hands. Jesus had to wait for us to change our minds and to choose that particular day whom we would serve. Jesus had to wait for each and every one of us to decide that we would give our lives over to him, to make him our Lord and our Savior. Can we say, thank you, Jesus, for waiting on me? I can. Thank you, Jesus, for waiting on Greg. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. You waited on Greg, and I thank you. Let's take a look at how Jesus waited on us. As it applies to my case, <clears throat> Jesus had to apply the balm listed in 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 8. As Jesus waited on me, he didn't apply his just claim, thank God. Instead, as Jesus waited on me, he applied patient love. As Jesus waited on me, he applied loving kindness. He applied pure love that did not dishonor me. Thank you, Lord. He applied love that was not self-seeking. He applied love that was not easily angered. 
And most importantly, Jesus applied love that has no record of wrongs. This is how my Lord and my Savior waited on me. How did Jesus wait on you? As you wait on the Lord, can you reflect on how Jesus waited on you? Point number three, he's worth the wait. He's worth the wait. I know he's worth the wait. We use this Christian experience of waiting on the Lord to build an even stronger relationship with the Lord. We pray a little bit more. We praise a little bit more. We study the Bible a little bit more. We love agape style, our friends and our enemies, a little bit more. We work while we wait. We acknowledge that the Lord had to wait for us. And we believe, all we believe, that the Lord Jesus Christ is worth the wait. But when we look at verse 31 of our text, the A clause, we see that there are still some today, as in Judah then, that will not wait. Some are still more focused on their just claim than they are on waiting for the Lord. And from verse 27, and I'm, I want to read that again. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord? I'm in verse 27. And my just claim is passed over by my God. They're more concerned with their just claim than on waiting on the Lord, appreciating Jesus waiting on them. And the fact, the fact that Jesus Christ and his blessings are worth the wait. We bless the Lord that none of those folks are here tonight. They're in the church down the street because all the folks here tonight are among those who wait on the Lord, those who wait on the Lord, who shall renew their strength. Let's stop right there for a second. Let's look at 2022. 2022 sapped some of our strength. COVID sapped some of our strength. A closed church sapped some of our strength. Illness and bereavement sapped some of our strength. But look at God. He's there for us. He's there with us to renew our strength. We need to shout right there, hallelujah. Thank you for renewing our strength. Thank you for renewing our strength through sickness and bereavement. Thank you for renewing our strength with our pastor, the Reverend B. Lewis Colleton and our deacons, and our officers, and our ministers, and our congregation. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah for renewing our strength. And then the Lord speaks so eloquently through Isaiah, through Isaiah's pen, to tell us exactly how much he shall renew our strength. The Lord tells us exactly, not by a little, but by a lot. The Lord says it right here. They shall mount up with wings as eagles, as eagles. Let's stop right there. See, the Lord has created over 11,000 bird species. But when it comes to exactly how the Lord is going to renew our strength, he chooses the bird with the seven foot wingspan. He chooses the bird that can fly between 10 and 20,000 feet above the ground. He chooses the bird that can fly up to 75 miles an hour. He chooses the bird that can cover over 125 miles in one day. <clears throat> what is the Lord saying to us? I believe that he's saying, when I answer your just claim because you've waited, 
because you've worked while you waited, because you've recognized my wait for you, because you believe that my blessings are worth the wait, that you will be able to take my blessings and fly at 10,000 plus feet. You'll be able to take my blessings all day long and fly all day long. You'll be able to take my blessings and when you come down out of the sky, you can keep on running in my blessings and you won't get weary. You can walk in my blessings and you won't become faint. Beloved, whether you fly with the Lord's blessings or run with the Lord's blessings or walk with the Lord's blessings, he shall renew your strength. And that's why he's worth the wait. He suffered 39 stripes just for you and me. He's worth the wait. He allowed himself to be nailed to an old rugged cross. He's worth the wait. He would not come down. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. He's worth the wait. He arose on the third day. He's a risen savior. He's worth the wait. He even went ahead and built you and he built me a mansion in heaven with our names on it. He's worth the wait. Once you work while you wait and you recognize the Lord's waiting for you, then you'll find out that Jesus is worth the wait. I want to speak to the youth and the young adult on worth the wait. I know you're young, you're teens, preteens, but you've looked at your elders, and I can tell you, youth and young adult, that you know that Jesus is worth the wait. Because as, as you've watched your elders, your parents, your grandparents, your aunts, your uncles, you've seen their just claims, and their just claims have been pressed down, shaken together by the Lord, and running over to your elders, youth and young adults, you've seen their just claims become blessings. Hallelujah. And then to the elders, to the senior Christian soldiers on the battlefield for the Lord, you've seen your prior just claims turned into blessings. You already know he's worth the wait. I'm just coming by this evening just to remind you, when it gets dark now, when it gets iffy now, when the doctor gives a poor report, wait on the Lord's report, because Jesus is worth the wait. He was worth the wait before, and he's worth the wait now you know he's worth the wait. You're a soldier for Christ. You know that Jesus is worth the wait. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let us go to the throne of grace. Heavenly Father, we thank you for allowing us to share this word this evening. Thank you for speaking through me and speaking to your people. We ask, Lord, now that we apply this word in our lives and that we take our just claims and we show patience and we wait on you, Lord, because we all believe truly that you, Jesus, our Lord and our Savior, you are worth the wait. Amen, amen, and amen. The doors of the church are open. The doors of the church are open. Won't you come? He's worth the wait. He's waited on you. He's waited on you. He's worth the wait. Jesus is certainly worth the wait. Amen, amen, and amen. Thank you for joining us for our midweek service. We pray the message you just heard will bless you in a mighty way. Please share our Shiloh Baptist Church YouTube channel link 
with all of your family and friends so they can be blessed as well. Now, you have the opportunity to bring your tithes and offerings to the storehouse as God has asked faithful believers to do. Just go to shilohbc.org forward slash give or send a text to the number on the screen or you can mail your offering into the church or stop by the church to drop it off. Just remember, God loves a cheerful giver. Join us each Sunday at Shiloh for Sunday school at 9 a.m. and Sunday worship service at 10 a.m. We would love for you to join us in person. If that is not an option for you, you can participate virtually as well. Then join us virtually each Wednesday for midweek service and Wednesday night Bible study. Here at Shiloh, we are a Bible preaching, Bible teaching church with a focus on saving souls. Remember that Matthew chapter 28 verse 19 tells us, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Until we meet again, always be blessed. Mm-hmm.